unto his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it but what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul his, I'm sorry lose his own soul and what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily, I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. I have read St. Matthews, the 16th chapter, verses 24 through 28. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his word and the edification of our souls. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Most gracious, eternal Father God, as again, our Father, we come to you this morning saying thank you. Thank you, dear Father, for our lying down last night and getting up this morning to see this brand new day. A day that wasn't made for us, our Father, but you made it happen, our Father, that we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that we have our health and strength once again, that we can see, walk, talk, hear, taste, and just hear your word once again, our Father. Tell us that you are still alive, our Father. We ask that, Father, strengthen us, our Father, where we weak, make us strong. And dear Heavenly Father, ask you to be with us today, our Father, as we Get something out this lesson that we can share with others about you, our Father. It's not about us, it's about you, Heavenly Father. We ask you, our Father, to calm those who are sick and shut in at this time. We ask you to look down on them, touch their feeble body, our Father, that they get healed once again. We ask you, our Father, to look down on this bereaved family as well. We ask you, our Father, just to touch them in the most mindful way, our Father, just to let them know, our Father, that. You may not see them on this side, our Father, but you see them on the other side. If they just trust and believe in your word, our Father, we ask your Father just to help us through these signs that we're going through, our Father. We know it's not easy, our Father, but we know, our Father, that you are still God. You still look high and look low. And you know all about our situation that we go through day by day. Father God, this is my prayer this morning. We ask all these blessings. In thy son, Jesus' name, for Christ's sake, do pray to us. Amen. 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 We um just glad to be here. Man. Yes. And, you know, we might be few in number, but you know what mm -hmm. God says, where well, there's two or three yep. gathered in his name and truly come to worship God. Amen. In the midst. And we have been looking at the topic of love from different aspects. Mm -hmm. And the song, Brother Sammy, was, Deacon Sammy, was so timely, more love to thee. And our lesson is talking about loving your neighbor, mm -hmm. or a subtopic, meeting the needs of others. And, and I was looking at our devotional scriptures and our background scriptures. <clears throat> so I'm going to read the uh, background scriptures coming out of Leviticus 19 and 18 and then uh, third Leviticus 34th verse. And it reads as thus, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, mm -hmm. but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Then the 34th said, but the stranger that dwell 
with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye, ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And as I said, we are looking at love and he is talking to us about love. And when we look at all of the hatefulness and the unloving acts that's taking place in our society today, I can see why the authors or many of us recognize and realize and they're saying there needs to be more love shown to one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, um, because it seems as though that we have fallen so far away from God, number one. Yes. And we feel that we are the only ones that matters. I, I'm speaking in general terms, and I know that don't fit everybody. Mm -hmm. But there's many that it does fit that, and because of what we see in society today. And it seems that there is no love in the world, but I begs to differ. Mm -hmm. And we look at the setting for this lesson where Jesus is teaching many lessons. And we look at uh, the 10th chapter of Luke and we'll see that uh, he was sending out his uh, 70 disciples. And he sent them out in twos and he did that for a reason. Number one is for a form of protection from, uh, for one another. They increase their faith. And so if one falters, the, uh, his partner can kind of pick him up and then they have wisdom and to get encouraged, find courage uh, in for one another. Because when we are out here on the mission field of uh, preaching and teaching Christ, we're going to come upon some obstacles or things might not go as like we will think it, they should go and we become discouraged. Therefore, for us to always have someone, needs to have someone uh, to say, don't be discouraged. It's all right. God got it. Mm -hmm. And this is, is what's going on then, because if you can think back or kind of reflect back in the early days of the church and in Jesus' ministry, or even just from the early days of the church, and how, uh, and I won't say condition, but traveling uh, traditions wasn't as modern as it is today. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have the technology, early history doesn't record it, that we have today. And yeah. we can pick up a phone and reach around the world. Or we can be right now, we can be seen all around the world, uh, zooming mm -hmm. and everywhere. So, mm -hmm. They didn't have it. They had to travel by foot or some other slower means of transportation, but their commitment and dedication was to um, proclaiming the word of, of, of Christ, okay? Yes. And so when we, and I want to take just a moment just to say um, we was dealing with it, and I was looking at what Jesus was teaching. This as a reflective in their ministry. Verses 8 through 16 dealt with the authority that he had given his disciples to heal. Mm -hmm. And verses 17 through 24 talks about the authority over the demons. And Jesus had to warn them, said, now listen, you're joyful and rejoicing, but I don't want you to get it twisted. Let's mm -hmm. don't let the, your joy be because of your success in the ministry of a power over the demons, or oh, but I want you to rejoice in the fact that, that you have been redeemed through my blood from mm -hmm. sin, and now you are destined for heaven. Mm -hmm. So uh, today's lesson, verses 25 through 37, uh, again with just talking about the Good Samaritan, and Jesus used that to answer this young man's question uh who was uh asking and when in today what my mission is to answer who is our neighbor and how can we become a better neighbor so let me just take and look at 
uh, 25th verse, and, I, and then I'm going to go on, but he said, there was a certain lawyer stood up to tempt Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And mm -hmm. Jesus told him, said, now listen, it's written in the law. How do you read it? In other words, how do you read the law? How do you interpret the law? We find so many scholars or attorneys misinterpret the laws of the land. Mm -hmm. And you find that so many of us who read the scripture have misinterpreted what the scripture says. And, and I'm one that I always say, if you can't find, uh, don't have, ask the Holy Spirit who is God will give you the correct interpretation of what the Bible is saying. And as you may have already encountered, or you will to just keep on, so many there's false prophets or false teachers who is teaching and leading people astray and misinterpreting what the scripture says. And I really like how Jesus took an answer, took the question and answered this young man's question and put it back in his lap. Many times, well, now listen, you a scholar is what he's saying to him. Mm -hmm. How do you interpret the law? You're supposed <laughs> to know what the law said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, number one, he said, you are supposed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength and all thy might. And you're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what and that's what the guy knew. And he answered and told Jesus, said, well, okay, mm. you've answered correctly. And he said, now, if you can do these things, you will live. And then and I will say this because if we have and can reciprocate the love of God, because at one point we didn't love him, but we uh, God through through God the Holy Spirit, who's pricked our hearts and opened our ears, opened our spiritual ears, and heard His His call to come and accept Jesus as our personal Savior. So and it's through faith. So, so now, okay, now He uh, He said, okay, you shall do that. But we have, and we've had this lesson before. How can you love God whom you never seen, but yet you hate your people neighbor that you have seen? You see every day, and then God specifically said, we are supposed to love God with our total being. That's what it means by our mind, soul, and heart. And then mm -hmm. we are supposed to love our neighbors. And what Jesus is getting at, because him being all knowing, he's getting ready to, and I'll use it, he's getting ready to put this young fella in his place. Because he mm -hmm. was, his, his prejudice <laughs> was showing because uh, they know the Jews in heaven is dealing with the Samaritans. And so he was trying to get to the fact that, well, how can I do this? And well, well who is my neighbor? He, he said, now listen here. Uh, let me just demonstrate to you who your neighbor is. And he did it so well and so beautifully and so eloquent that uh, he young man didn't have nothing else to say to him about, you know, that uh, uh, who is my neighbor? Because as we know the story, he took, uh, uh, and, and use um, the, this parable. That's what this this uh, verse in verse thirty really talks about. Show that it is a parable. You, we know that a parable, and when he mm -hmm. tells an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, see mm -hmm. that. And if at the lawyer, if Jesus had told me what he told me, I would have not been kept on. I just quit while I was ahead. I mean, that's what. <laughs> You know, sometimes we need to know when to leave well enough alone. But he wouldn't. He kept on asking him, well, who is our neighbor? Okay. Uh, and he was, and as I said, he was asking that question because he wanted to justify his own prejudice against the Samaritan. Jesus being all knowing, mm -hmm. knew this. And then she said, no, okay, let me just. Shut up this little boy real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just take this story here about this <laughs> and tell him and show him who is his neighbor. And you have to be moved your prejudiceness or your whatever malice is if you're going to say you in Christ. That mm -hmm. they just don't go together. You, you, you know, uh, mm -hmm. she, yeah, it's hard to love some of our neighbors because they can be some rascals. Okay. Yes, oh, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. yes, they are. But we have to we have to rely <laughs> on God, the Holy Spirit, who lives in us, 
to help us uh, love even I, that's what we talked about love your enemy because oh, everybody don't love us and, mm -hmm. and they won't don't care how good you try to be to them that can always be that but what we are to do is to do our part and let God do the rest okay right. now and I, I'm and I'm getting into where I, the meat of what I really want to talk about and then dissect verse 30 because that really brings it all home and mm -hmm. he said and like I said the little old smart mouth lawyer wouldn't leave well enough alone and so Jesus just took Verse 30, as we can say, and this uh, took him to school real nicely. Uh, <laughs> you know, the story where he told him, said, well, now, there was a certain man who was traveling. He was traveling on this dangerous highway by himself, mm -hmm. and he got robbed. He got injured. Okay, here come the priest. Here come the Levi. They refused to help this Samaritan guy. Okay, mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. because of whatever, they just didn't didn't bother by trying to help him. But here come the good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't worry about the nationality or the wise. All he saw was the condition. And he said, I can do something about it. And he moved with it when not just in his heart and his in order to do something. What the story says he does, he did was he went over and saw by so and bandaged up his wound, took him into to the town and to a, uh, the hotel, and told him, said, now you stay here. He told the innkeeper, said, now help take, finish taking care of him. When I'm on my way, when I come back, I'll pay you. Okay. So now let's 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 look at it from the the part that I really want to talk about. Look, uh, the parable of it emphasized the true saving grace and faith that is compassion for those in need. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't have to be my neighbor next door, across mm -hmm. the street, or a blood relative. It's just who's in need and we have the resources to provide the need. Okay. Right. That's that is showing love and it is showing the love of God. You know what? Because God is compassionate with us all the time. Okay? Because uh -huh. we are some imperfect people. I don't care how as perfect as we try to be, hmm. that we have some flaws. But the good thing about it is, is that we serve a perfect God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The other point I want to bring out is, uh, is a call to love God, number one, and a mm -hmm. call to love others. We cannot say we truly love God and don't love our neighbor, uh, or the people around us and who we see all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, and I'm gonna repeat it. It's hard to do that now sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. we have to do it anyway because we are compelled by God to do that. Mm -hmm. And as we accept Christ as our Savior, and we as believers have a new life and the grace that Christ Jesus gave us that enables us to love, to be merciful, and compa have compassion on those in need, regardless of who they are, what their gender, their mm -hmm. ethnicity, or yes. their social status. Yes. Regardless of the need. That is our, as believers in Christ, we are to do that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then, also, as a believer, we are to have a heart of compassion that works through God, the Holy Spirit. See, he's, he, the Holy Spirit, is there to help us in our shortcomings. Since we are human in the flesh, we are here in this world, mm -hmm. and, and, and we are being bombarded with so much negativity. Mm -hmm. to, unless we have, rely on the Holy Spirit, to keep us laser focused 
that and to be in that spirit of discernment because sometimes right wrong seems so is presented that so we'll begin to believe is right mm -hmm. and i'm saying no but thank god for the holy spirit who will give us that discernment and no that's not right that is they can take a little bit of the truth and wrap it up in a nice christmas package and you would just know it's tell all truth and it'd be so far wrong. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> then the other part of that, so it, it, that's why the spirit of discernment and listening to the, the voice of the Holy Spirit, who is God, it will keep mm. us focused and it keep us from getting tied up and all tangled up in the foolishness of this world and showing and having no compassion for our fellow man who might is who is in need. And uh then if that's the case in that sense, then the world won't know who we are. We just know what we say we are. But mm -hmm. what we do in a godly manner and a care and with a compassionate manner will tell the world who we are, you know, mm -hmm. It'll, it will parallel who we say we are. Okay, let me say it this way. If I'm walking around here tout my Lord, tout my horn, as I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. When every time you see me, I'm acting like the world. <laughs> the world. That's, the world. That, that's sending mixed messages. And what right. people see me do is what they're going to believe. Mm hmm and so that is why it is so important for our lifestyle and our words parallel each other. Okay. And now there's a phrase, the works that I do speaks for me. Right. Yes. You will not have to say a whole lot if your works says that, yes, I have the love of God in my heart. And I love my neighbor or uh, others as myself, whether they love me in return. And if there is a need for the one that hates me the most or dislikes me the most, then but I'm still going to do what I can for them. Then that is showing the mercifulness of God, who is our father. And as we emulate him and all that we do, then the world will begin to see that's a Christian, that's a Christian over there. That's a Christian over there. And instead of saying, I don't know what that is up there. I know what, <laughs> I know what they say they are, <laughs> but then they, they uh, lifestyle does not always say it that way. Okay, so that is our, our responsibility. That's our charge, that's our mission, is mm -hmm. to emulate God and all that we do, okay? Then uh, the other point I wanna make in this is us being a good neighbor, a Samaritan neighbor, we must not only be sensitive to those of like nationality or gender or culture, but instead we are to be sensitive to all those in need, do all we can, why we can, and as much as we can that is in our power to do. And I'm gonna say this, prayer is, a we is an effective weapon that we have at our disposal, we as Christians. Uh, we can pray for our loved ones. We can pray for one another. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. As it reaches places that we may never go in our physical bodies, and we can do more in prayer, you know, and uh, then we can probably do in ourselves. Let me just use this uh, use this uh, analogy. The world is filled with hate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do not like it and 
we take our weapon that we have, and that's prayer, and go to God in sincere prayer, asking him to touch the hearts and minds of these evil people, that they will dismantle all this hate. Now, and I'm going back to one of the background scriptures that I said, we not to, not to hold a grudge against our evil doers. We not to hold hate in our heart for all of this hate and, and evilness that we see coming at us. But still we go to God in prayer because he's the only one can change man's heart. Mm -hmm. He has the power to change, but we, at, we are making intercessory prayer for our loved ones and asking him to change the conditions of the hearts of men. Because why? We want, we have that heart of God. We are loving everybody. And we want to see our fellow man who is, is not on the right side of what I'm saying. Well, to come on the right side, enjoy the sweetness and the blessings of being in fellowship with God and want to know. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay? Now, he will do that if we ask him. Now, I, I may say this, interject this little note. As I interact with people from around the world on a daily basis, I'm beginning to see more and poor of who normally wouldn't interject Christ or love of God in their daily routine. It's beginning to show and to say it. They're beginning to express it more. I said, well, two things is happening. Prayer is working and God is getting your attention. It's getting people's attention to how that we are to love God with all I told being and to love our fellow man as I said. He's getting that attention. So this takes me into my second question. How can we become better neighbors to one another? Well, this is kind of simple. We do this by being meeting the needs of those who are in need. And we do it from our heart with genuine love because they may not be the one that will come to your rescue, subject of the sinners, when we need a helping hand. God always have a ram in the bush, so to speak. He always has somebody to step in and help you. It may not be the person that you've helped who was in need, okay? So that's why when, you do, when we do something, we do it from our heart and let God work it out from there, okay? Now, uh, Jesus challenged us in our lesson uh, to try and do all the needs and be as good as we can, and we be better neighbor, as I just said, from the heart. See, stuff generates our action from starts in the heart. What is conceived in the heart, it comes manifest itself outward. So if I have a, a heart of love in my heart, then I can look past somebody else who is uh, different from me or have different beliefs than I do, uh, different philosophies or theologies and whatever ology than I do. If they have a need and if I can, and I'm not, I'm just using an example. If I can do something about it, then do it and be through with it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Now, uh, and I don't want to sound repetitive. When we can do things from our heart and show mercy, we are also emulating God because Justice was demanded for all of us before we became believers in Christ. But Jesus represents our mercy because his death on the cross spared us from God justice, which would have been eternal, eternal separation from him, which is what was demanded 
because when we did, when humanity disobeyed God back there in the Garden of Eden, that separated us. But God in his mercy and his love, he gave his best to redeem us, to restore that broken fellowship. And all he asked us to do is to show love to, all, to, to everybody else that whom we meet and to love him, first of all, okay? Now, so then if we can uh, do that or practice that or work at doing that, we will have and we will be emulating Christ and his love and showing mercy and compassion. And it is all stems from God the Father because who, <laughs> May, may be a silly question. Who's going to give his only son to die for the sins? Of, but we couldn't do our, we couldn't pay our sin debt. We couldn't die for our own sin. We had to have Jesus Christ to do that. But he did it out of love. And that's why he talks about God's agape love, his unconditional love, regardless of what we do, even after we've become uh, restored, I've been restored in our fellowship. We still in our humanness get wrong sometimes. But do God stop loving us? No. Does he provide for all of our need? Every day, every day, every single moment of the day. His grace covers us. Why? Because wherever we are, his protection is around us. Mm -hmm. Nothing but love. And uh, we deserve some punishment sometimes for some things, but he gives us another chance. So all he's asking us to do, to be a good neighbor, and you do so by loving everybody. And, and to do it like he does it. I love all of you because I created all of you. And when we can take the fact that, yes, all humanity was created and the likeness and the image of God, that means we have a heart of compassion. We have the capacity to love as well as to mm -hmm. hate. He made us a free will agent. You can go right or go left, that's your choice, but I'm gonna still love you. But if I have to punish you, I'm gonna do just that. Mm -hmm. It has compassion on us. And he's merciful to us. So what do I recommend? What do I recommend? And I highly recommend this. And I'm almost finished. Love our neighbor. Do not love them according to our ranks, their status, or their religious affiliation, okay? Because our denomination didn't change save, but there is no saving grace in being a Baptist or being a Catholic or being a uh, Koji or whatever. It's, it's as simple as having faith, believing in Jesus Christ, and accepting Him as our personal mate, Savior. That's what saves us. And if one says that I'm a Christian and going to go different from what uh, the scripture says about the same sex stuff, that's not my problem to judge him or to punish him. God mm -hmm. said he'll do that. He, we all have to give an account. They are, mm -hmm. we are, and the ones who's hating and doing all, they're going to have to give an account for one of these days. There is going to be judgment day, and we all going to have to stand in the, in the presence of the righteous judge. And one thing I can tell you for sure, he keeps the best records of anybody I know, because he's God. And he makes no mistakes. And when it comes time for us to answer for our own doom uh, action, then everybody going to be held accountable. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I want to make another point. True love, God determines how we treat our fellow human being, regardless of their race or ethnic. That's all I've been talking about all day, all morning, is love God, 
and love our neighbor, regardless of who they are. If we can help them, help them. If we can pray for them all the time, you know, as we pray for ourselves. And we do not love like the world, because the world will love you as long as you can love it back and do for it. That's how, that's how man's love. But with God's love, say, I love you in spite of. And we are different from the world. Questions or comments? Um, just, I guess, just basically one comment. Um, I guess what Jesus was doing was actually reiterating what his father had put in place. And this is coming out of Leviticus um, 19, chapter 9. I mean, verse, chapter 19, verses 9 through 18. Mm -hmm. And just, just paraphrasing what you had said, um, you know, if you have abundance, then you share it and give it to your, to the less of those, or even to your neighbors, especially when you know they're without or they don't have as much. Exactly. Okay. Um, you don't deal with um, people that, uh, you know, you don't deal with them harshly. No. You know, you don't, right. You treat them as, as, as if you want to be treated. You want to be treated fairly. So, and you speak like in words of um, kindness. Mm -hmm. You reiterate the, the way you want to be reciprocated. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we get, um, we get beyond ourselves. And I guess this is where this paraphrase come from, the haves and the have nots. And that shouldn't even be because if I have, you should have. Now, it might not be the same as equal in portion, mm -hmm. but, you know, we all will be able to benefit. We That's all true. will be able to, should be able to prosper. Mm -hmm. Now, I might not be able to prosper at the same level, mm -hmm. but you will have, you will have all your basic needs at least met. Right. You know, you shouldn't be totally just outdoors and out and, and without. And, and, you know, God, you know, it, he used the good Samaritan and Samaritans, we all know, were, are peculiar people. Mm -hmm. So he used a peculiar person mm -hmm. in the parable to show where even though he was a peculiar person, he still had the love to help and render aid. Whereas you had these priests and Levites, and we all know that those were people that were higher in rank as far as priesthood. Mm -hmm. And if you use it into layman times today, okay, it doesn't matter if you're a bishop, if you're a pastor or a cardinal, if you see someone down and out, then you lend them a hand. That's true. Because like you said, in uh, your works will speak for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why when God, you know, when he reads you your life in the book of life, and he says, you know what? My good and faithful servant come into come into my kingdom. Well, faithful also means you have to work. That's true. You can't just be here and just coexist. And you share, you know, you you share with what you have. It can just lay on your heart to maybe just give someone something that you maybe wanted them to always have. And especially now with the way things are running out, you don't have to wait to a special occasion. Just go ahead and give it to them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Especially what's on your heart. Because you don't know what might happen from one year to the next. Uh, that's that's true, and I want to pick up on two points you you made. Is that God has a perfect welfare system. The haves are supposed to share or give to the have-nots, one of the less fortunate. That's what because Jesus said the poor you're gonna always have with. But if you if if you have and I don't, we're supposed to share, and everybody has. And that was kind of the philosophy or the thinking when I grew up uh, in the South years ago. It didn't matter if we was like miles apart from my closest neighbor, and he could see them coming through. Okay, do you, uh, Emma, do you have some sugar? I need some flour. Yeah, child, come on and get, and they give you what they have. Part of what they have, and they didn't mean everybody had, and everybody could eat. Or that they would said, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some chickens, and I care some." 
and they will share that. Uh, today, we see greed has taken control because those that have, they don't want to share, they will not give, they want more and more and more. And the thing is battling now because of two things. And I don't mean, I'm not going to get political. It's just about healthcare. We all should have good health care and affordable health care. And we see some who have money, they can go to the hospital and oh, everything is fine. Whereas some of us don't even get to the hospital because we don't have energy. Is that right? And I say no, because that's not how God would do it. And then two, there's, um, I think when you have these nonprofit organizations trying to provide food for the people who does not have it or their income may have been cut off and it's not to be done in a negative way, it, it should be done with the spirit of care, love and compassion, okay? And if some of us who know where food is being given away, it's no stigma to go get it and give it to somebody who you know that does need it, who they might not have known how to get where it was or had a transportation to get to. It's Amen. And, and, and I, all I'm trying to say is we who has the means or the resources to help somebody do right. it and do it from your heart. And then right. that God will overflow you with blessings because I don't care how anybody tries, God is has all of the blessings and you can't be God given. That might be a cliche, but it's a true one. Now, right. and I just challenge everybody to try out do God and see how you're gonna come out. You're gonna come out on the losing. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna come out on the losing end. So <laughs> yeah, just try, try not do God and see how you come out. You will not win that race, okay? That's and right. even with the COVID, you know, right. be just yeah. be mindful right. of others. You know, um, the stores when they first started having all these produce and products, okay, well, you can only use so much. Yeah. Leave some for others. You know, you're not the only household that has to have cleaning products that have to have food. So it doesn't mean that you have to just gouge because yeah. you can only use and have so much. And God is going to make a provision no matter what is going on. But we need to start being so mindful and courteous of others. If they, if they get 60 bottles, you take one or two, and that should be limited, and then leave the rest with someone else. Well, that is so true. And then the stores have to start putting a limit on certain things. But They've done that. And, and, and see, I, I try and look at it. Well, people is afraid, but they're hoarding and they're not trusting God and his provision of care, okay? Yes. Because if I get two, then leave the other 58 bottles for uh, some other people, okay? There, there's so many other people. We all in the same, we all in this same situation. I, right. and, and, and we all going through something that we have never ever experienced before. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is on a magnitude of what happened over a hundred years ago. And none of us here yet, unless you're a hundred years old. All right. <laughs> All right. It's been through something. <laughs> this, yes, yeah, SARS was bad, but it was not this bad. So now, and I still feel this way. God is using this pandemic to get our attention. We have mm -hmm. prayed. I don't want to get into my subject next in the next two minutes, but that's <laughs> where it is because. We just walked away from God, okay? Right. Yes. Just cut it here. We are praying we get into that because I'm going to bring out some of this in the message, okay? Dry, uh, all right. <laughs> dry bones in the valley. That's the message. Let us pray. Thank God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us together. Thank you for this message. And Father, let it fall on somebody's ears. And it open up their spiritual ears and that we have to love everybody regardless of who they are and what are their mindset because you change his minds and hearts. You can reach where we cannot. But Father, we know one thing, prayer works. And Father, yes. thank 
housekeeper, let us keep praying for ourselves and one another. These are another blessing we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.